Hello everyone. Welcome. My name is Dina and this is my channel about cross stitch. I'm so glad that you're um, stitching and that you're watching uh, videos of other people sharing their craft and their skills. I have been really grateful for floss tube during this time of COVID <laughs> when we can't go very many places. We're sheltering in place as much as possible. And um, I can't tell you the number of hours that I have gotten comfort and inspiration from watching uh, other floss tubers. So uh, I hope that you see something in this video that you like and um, maybe one of your favorites. Uh, I'll be working on this month, who knows, but um, I am here this morning on Sunday morning. It is the 13th of September, and I am here to share with you my progress from yesterday. I did work on a new start yesterday. I did my next Advent animal. This is Odette Owl. And I really struggled with whether to stitch her or not because I received an Odette Owl in an exchange years ago at a retreat. And the lady who stitched the one I received, the ornament that I received, she had actually stitched Odette on both sides. It was reversible. Um, and I thought, oh, why do I want to stitch it again? I've got it. Except she didn't put the number on it because it was a single ornament as a gift. And so, and it's on a different fabric. So I thought about it and thought about it and decided that that's okay. I can have two Odettes. So I wanted this series to be complete. So I went ahead yesterday and I started Odette Powell. And then late last night, I finished her. So these are wonderful pieces. Uh, they, they're averaging anywhere from eight to 10 hours, depending on how much backstitching is there and, and whatnot. With Odette, there wasn't that many color changes once you got through with the little ornaments down here, um, because mostly she's white. But if you don't like stitching white, then that's a whole different problem. <laughs> but here's Odette. I think she's lovely. And she's sitting on her tree branch that she's decorated for Christmas. I love the little angel ornament. I think that is so cute. And the Christmas tree. And then you've got the different ornaments here that, you know, are like the bulbs that we, we use. The other interesting thing about Odette, other than her beautiful eyes, is her red bow. And the red bow you make with six strands of DMC that you put in a little tiny bow and then you attach it by just stitching over the middle, um, you know, on, on um, to Odette's on top of her head. So there's Odette Owl. My next one that I hope to do this month as well is Ethan Elephant. So we'll see how he goes. We'll see if he, if I get to, to stitch him and hopefully be able to share that with you as we go down the road. Well, I won't be on here very long this morning. I'm headed off to our church because today is a retirement ceremony for one of the pastors there who's been there almost 30 years. And we've only been there three, but he was the first person we met and the most friendly person you would ever want to meet. And um, he and his wife have become very good friends of ours. And so I wanna go because uh, we're finally able to go back in person. And I'm doing that about every two to three weeks. Um, we have to wear masks and we only allow a certain number of people in the building. So you do actually have to register to go. <laughs> um, so today is a very special day, so I registered very early so I could get a seat. And I'm excited because my husband is singing in an ensemble to honor our friend, and I wanna hear him sing. So that'll be a really good morning for me. And then after lunch, I hope to stitch. Sorry if I hit the table, I think I did. Um, so maybe I'll have more progress to share with you this evening. I hope so. In the meantime, though, enjoy your stitching and enjoy your Sunday. 
Happy stitching. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, how are you? Welcome back. Today is September 15th and I'm here with an update for you. It's been a crazy, crazy week. I've had uh, Zoom meetings, per in-person meetings, and um, appointments <laughs> for my family, including my dog. She had her annual physical um, today, just some blood work to make sure her heartworm pills are uh, effective, and they are, so she's worm free, and so we're happy about that. Um, but just, you know, one thing right after another. Uh, yesterday, just for an example, I left the home, my home in uh, the early morning hours to um, take a family member to an appointment and came right home just in time to go to the post office and get a package mailed that I had wanted to ship off to my friend Glow and a package to keepsakes for finishing. And um, then at 10 o'clock, uh, I, was, I was at the post office to do that. And as soon as I got home, my husband and I had to leave to go meet some friends for lunch, which was a working lunch for our, um, our fundraiser at church. And um, spent all, all morning, mid-afternoon, um, working on that event, uh, going all over town, putting up posters and passing out flyers to advertise the event with this friend of mine um, who's my co-chair and then took her home. And as soon as I came back, I had to run to the grocery store. My son needed some lunch items for this week uh, for him to take to lunch with him. And I got back just in time to cook supper. And then I finally, last night at about eight o'clock p.m., I sat down to stitch for the first time all day. That's been how my week's been going. <laughs> so, it did take me three tries to finish my goal on this project, but the one I was working on is Cross Stitch Nation. And I had um, given it a good start. I had gotten the border across here done the first time, and then I got um, I Belong to V done. So this time I picked up at Cross Stitch Nation and the first night I stitched, that's all I got done. I didn't have much time at all before bedtime and I had to be up really early the next day. And then the second day I came in here and I started on this person and um, did about half of this person and then had to finish it up today. So I'll share with you what I've been doing, how far I've have come. So here's my cross stitch nation. Now, this beautiful variegated silk in here is called New England Berries. And um, it, it's, it's, it's a gorgeous piece. And I got it from the Thread Gatherer. It was donated to me, it was gifted to me. And um, so I did the dress in that, and I actually did the variegation up and down like this to, so that I could get a good block of, of the color spread down the dress to make it look more like a watercolor print. And then I took this darker purple here, which is a DMC, and it's 3803. And I felt like it looked really pretty with this darkest part of the purple in the dress and I used it to do the charted accent V's you know down the the dress like that so I think it turned out beautifully it is quite heavily variegated but I like it and I like the colors in it so I did that of course this is my uh, person representing African American um, stitchers that's in our cross stitch nation and um, this thread I changed the color of as well because it is gonna be used this color will be used in another dress and I'm gonna do that with each of the threads I'm gonna take a color from one of the other stitchers and I'm gonna use it in one of the threads and that is just sort of a subtle image or message that we're all interrelated and so that's that's why I chose to do that. 
a different color and one that doesn't match the outfit that she has on. We don't always stitch something that matches us, you know, <laughs> or what we're wearing. Um, but anyway, you, you understand my rationale, I think, that I'm trying to kind of tie everyone together in one nation. So the next time I pick this up, I will start one of the other two people next to her. I'm just gonna start and work, you know, my way out from there. It was, I couldn't really start in the center, so I just picked one of the ladies, and she had the smaller of the two dresses that were near the middle. And so I thought, well, I'm not having a lot of stitching time. I'll do the one that will be a little bit quicker. So that's, that's what I have. Now her, um, her skin tone, I used 3882, if you wanna know, uh, for her. And I think she's beautiful. And I changed her hairstyle just a little bit because all of the women's hair looks like a little flip. And not everybody ha should have the exact same hairstyle. So I turned hers under and made it um, a really pretty, uh, more um, sophisticated look to me. And then I will change up the other um, hairstyles a little bit as I can. I'm not that good at it, but I just wanted to chart it a little bit differently so that each person has a little bit of uniqueness to them because we are all unique, you know? Uh, we belong to the same cross-stitch nation, but we are individuals. And so I wanted to kind of show that too a little bit. So I'm having fun personalizing this piece. I hope that you'll try that some. Um, as you work on something and uh, get a little bolder with it. I actually did change something on this piece today. I had said in my first uh, conversion that I wrote down, I was gonna use this beautiful uh, New England berries for the dress and I had a light green that was called green apple silk that I was gonna do the um, accents with. But when I got the New England berries threads started and I could see the greens next to each other. When you look at it in the skein, it looks like they match perfectly. But when you start stitching with them and get them all spread out where you can actually see the true colors, they didn't look good together at all. So instead, I looked for a color to pull out that beautiful purple and that's how I decided on that DMC. So. I will publish my conversion in the end, just in case there's any part of it you like, um, that you might wanna do something in one of those colors, uh, but I won't do it till I'm done, <laughs> because obviously I'm changing it as I go. So there you have it, that's my Cross Stitch Nation. I think what I'm gonna do next is go ahead and pull out my Magazine Sal piece that I wanna start. It is an Autumn Bell Pull and I have it kitted and I'm ready to go with it and it's supposed to be started in this month. And um, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to get a little start on it tonight. If I can get enough stitches in it to call it a start, that may be all I do on it this month. But um, I'm trying to get a little bit back on track onto um, my schedule that I had proposed. Having so much to do outside of the home uh, for three days in a row um, was something I did not foresee, I hadn't planned. Um, but it has been great fun. So, um, so now I'm gonna get busy. I'm gonna see if I can't get my start on my magazine sale and I'll be happy to come back and share it with you uh, whatever I get done on it. <laughs> so until I see you again, happy stitching. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today is Thursday, it is September 17th, and my name is Dina. Welcome back to my channel about cross stitch. I have a couple of things to share with you this morning. First, I won a celebration giveaway from Cat Crazy Creations from Sonia, and I just wanted to thank her again for her prize and um, I was delighted to have uh, been selected by her random number generator. And my celebration package was two pieces of Lugana. These are both 28 count. 
The first one is a Springfield Sage. I think that's just lovely. That's You're getting a very good depiction of that color. And the second one is a light ash gray. So these are going in my stash, and when I start kitting up for my new starts next year, I have two beautiful pieces of fabric thanks to Sonia, and I'm very excited about that. And then I decided to try out um, a new fabric dyer, Bee Stitch Me, new to me. A lot of you have bought several things from her, and um, I just kept I just kept hearing about her and hearing about her, so I got on her web page and I ordered a 32 count Jobelin, and the color that I chose was Mummy. Isn't that modeling beautiful? It's subtle, but it's consistent all the way through. I can't wait to stitch on it, but I, um, I love the neutral, and I'm gonna use that again when I kit up some new pieces looking toward any new starts that I want to do next year. So, wanted to share that with you. So that's my haul. And the, uh, and my uh, happy mail, I guess, all together. Um, the other thing I'll share with you now is that I have a new start. I've been doing all the finishes this month, just finish, finish, finish. <laughs> But right now, I am participating in the monthly magazine sale and that uh, C. Um, Zook Stitch and her uh, bestie uh, are putting together. And so uh, this was my start for autumn. It actually says autumn, that probably won't happen again. But um, this first appeared in a magazine back in 2006, in August of 2006, in Stony Creek Collection Magazine. So, um, I don't have that magazine any longer, but I do have the pamphlet that came after the magazine. Uh, but since I do have a magazine from 2008 that references that in a letter and shows the picture of it and says what issue it came out of, I think that's close enough. That's as close as I could get anyway, Carolyn. So I did give this a start on the, starting on the 15th and I stitched on it the 15th and the 16th. And if you'll excuse me turning around here real quick, I haven't even taken it off my floor stand. This is how far I got. So I have a little bit of the A that I'll do after I stitch the, the part that goes in between so I don't have to worry about misplacing it. Um, but this is the first letter of the bell pull. And I'm doing this on 32 count Queen Anne's lace. I ordered a fat half and I cut it in half. And get this, I cut it in half again. So this is a fourth of that piece of fabric. So the other half of this half I have ready now, and that will be a bell pull that I'm gonna do that's a winter bell pull uh, down the road once I finish this one. And then I have a whole half of this piece, this big and long, for something down the road that I might wanna do. So I'm very excited that I may get up to three projects, maybe four, out of this one piece of fabric. So that makes it much more economical when you think of it like that. So that's what I started for the magazine set. So let's talk about plans for a second. Today is the 17th, so I'm starting on the, my, uh, really starting on the second half of my September stitching. And this month has been all about finishing, trying to get some whips finished and off my plate. And you know, I've had a new start, so that's a good thing <laughs> that I was doing that. But I have some prompts I need to hit first. I need to stitch on something that has yellow and brown in it. And so today I'm gonna reach over in a moment and grab my Autumn Arbor uh, because it has lots of yellows and browns in it. And I'm gonna stitch on that to get my uh, minimum number of stitches just to meet the prompt. 
and then I have to stitch on a, a piece that has an object in it that could have lead in the design. And I think I'm gonna pull out my scissors and bobbins because it has those scissors in it. And uh, sewing implements, I think, could have lead in them. Don't know that they do, but I think they could. And so uh, I'm gonna use that to meet the last two prompts on that um, story that we, we had to look at called Sunflower Week. So um, I did get to use my bell pull for two prompts. I got to use it for a, a bonus to stitch on something that has sunflowers on the design. There they are. And I had to stitch on, for a second prompt, stitch on a design that had vegetation in it or vegetables. Well, there you go. There's vegetables all through here. So it helped me make two prompts in addition to being my new start for the magazine sale. So I love it when it works out that way. That, that, that does, does a great job, doesn't it? Um, well, that is about all I have to share with you this morning. I may be able to come back this evening and show you progress maybe on Autumn Arbor if I have time to meet that prompt today. And if I'm lucky enough to meet two, you may get to see Scissor and Bobbins as well. But we'll see. Stay tuned. In the meantime, happy stitching, everyone. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dina and today is Friday. It's the 18th of September and I'm here for an update. Yesterday, I did get a chance to stitch on my Autumn Arbor. That was something I had mentioned in my uh, last video segment that I was gonna try to pull that out last night and get some work on it. I'll remind you of what this looks like. It is a drawn thread piece. It's beautiful. And when I started, I had done this top section up here, and I started over here on this first motif. And you had to stitch on something that had brown and yellow. So how awesome was that, that the actual object I stitched had brown and yellow in it? And then I came on over and did the little black bird, and then I got this tree done. I love that tree. That is a beautiful silk floss that's highly variegated, that's called for in this pattern. And um, it's used up here some in the leaves as well. It's just really, really pretty. So um, that's how far I got. I thought I did a really good job. I used this on my little WIPGO board. I, I joined WIPGO very late, and so I just have a little board for what's left of the year. And on one of my WIPGO uh, assignments was to do at least one motif on this, and I did too, so I did a little more than I needed to. But mainly I did it for the prompt of getting the brown and, and yellow together. So that's my progress. Um, this is going beautifully. There are specialty stitches galore. These leaves are specialty stitches, and these leaves are specialty stitches but they have great diagrams and they're not hard to do. So I've been enjoying it. I really did enjoy working on it. I can't wait to get to pick it up again. I was actually telling um, someone in a comment on my video yesterday that uh, this one has tempted me to pick it back up again this month if I have time. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to do that. So that was yesterday evening. And then this morning I got the chance to talk to my sister Stephanie and I did a little bit of stitching um, before that call started and then a little bit since then. And um, I also was stitching this for a prompt. This prompt was to stitch on something that had an object on it that might have lead in it. And so I was being kind of tongue in cheek, but I said these little houses in here might have lead paint or they might have lead piping, depending on how old they are. <laughs> so I pulled out my scissors and bobbins and I worked a little bit on it. And when I started, I had stitched across this row. I had all of this up here done and part of the scissors down to where I had to stop because my um, scroll rides. So when I started on it, uh, working on this, I started on this spool right here and worked my way across. So I will take it off my floor stand now and share it with you. This is where I got to today. I'm really tickled. 
I got these two completely done. And I even backstitched the white on this house because it doesn't show up that great, even though it's B5200. And I just think that that helps it to pop just a little bit. And I got all the way over to finishing this spool. So I have the top of this spool to do and one more small spool um, with a flower in it that sort of mirrors this, but in a different color. It's pink where that one's blue. And then I will have to roll my scroll rod and come down here and do the whole bottom section. So I'm almost halfway done with that one. Almost. It's a great, great progress today and the day isn't over. So I am excited to tell you that this afternoon I'm going to be virtually stitching with a friend who is stitching, uh, gathering eggs with me, Laura, and um, we are going to stitch on it together today. So I'm excited about that. And I've cleared the decks to do that today. So, but I'm really tickled that I got to touch two different widths today. Interestingly enough, I want to go back and finish both of them. I guess I've got finishing in the blood right now. I'm wanting to finish everything I stitch. Um, but I don't know that either one of them is far enough along to do that this month. Well, I'm going to say goodbye for now, and I'm going to head on out. To, um, I'm having lunch with my husband, and then um, I'll be doing my virtual stitching this afternoon, so I'm having a great day. Great day. Couldn't ask for a better day. I hope you are, too. I hope you're enjoying your stitching. And in the meantime, I will talk to you soon and I will be enjoying my stitching. Happy stitching, everybody. Hello, everyone, welcome back. This is Dina. It is Sunday, September the 20th, and this morning we woke up to a brisk 52 degrees. <laughs> That was quite a shock. Uh, you see I have on a warmer uh, cover um, today over my turtleneck shirt, so uh, that was for the uh, weather outside. But I wanted to come in uh, today and give you a stitching update of what I've been able to accomplish over the weekend. It was a um, stitch-a-thon and cross-stitch finish line, and so I wanted to participate in that. But what got me started this weekend is I was able to do a virtual stitching with a friend of mine named Laura. And uh, she is a floss tuber and she just put up a new video um, this weekend. And uh, I would encourage you to go and check her out. It's um, her, a uh, he stitcher. I'll, I'll try to uh, put her, her video uh, name below so you can check her out sweet sweet friend and uh, we we've, we've not met in person yet because every time she's come to our stitching meetups in the state of Georgia that we try to have I was at a retreat <laughs> so you can see how long ago it's been since we were able to meet in person but she and I did some virtual stitching Friday we are doing a stitch along together and I worked on gathering eggs which I've already shared with you and she worked on a Christmas stocking for her grandson but that got me going, and um, as soon as I got through stitching on gathering eggs for our uh, time that we stitched together, I went right back and picked up one of my whips that I had worked on earlier in the month because it was going so quickly, uh, it was stitching up so well that I thought I would like to really push it toward a finish so that I could be sure and finish it next month. So, when I realized it was the Stitchathon this weekend, I thought this will be a great piece for the Stitchathon. I think it would be easy to stitch, easy to count the stitches, and so I decided I would just work on it from 5 o'clock Friday uh, until the Stitchathon was over on Sunday. So, that's what I did, except I didn't make it all the way to the Stitchathon ends because I finished it. So, I'm talking about. Scissors and Bobbins by Jardin Privé. And when I left off, I had this last motif to finish. I had done the um, spool, but I hadn't done the flower. 
and uh, I had to come back and pick that up and do that flower. And then I had to finish the scissors. I had one half done on this one side done. I had to do the other side. And all of the stitching below that line of bobbins I had to do. But as you can see, it's not that much. Lettering goes pretty quickly. And then this was just a very small little line of motifs. You've got two flowers, you've got your needle and thread, and the thread winds all the way around here. And you have a bird here, and a little fence here, and a little lamb there. It, it, well, there's three flowers, aren't there? There's one in there too. But they're small, a little tiny, a few stitches here, a few stitches there. It did mean a little bit of color changing, <laughs> but I, I was able to, to finish that. So I wanna show you my finish of scissors and bobbins. And I think it's adorable, absolutely adorable. It's on an antique white um, Lugana and I'm just tickled with how it turned out. Now I wanna tell you a couple of little things about it. Um, I did a little bit of back stitching around the ecrus and the whites because this fabric is a very light colored fabric and the whites, you can see them really well, but they're, part of that is because I back stitched them. And the ecru, you can see here and on that sheet, look better because they're backstitched. And down here, I don't think you could even tell that was a picket fence until I backstitched it. And I backstitched that little sheep as well. So those were just a couple of little extra things that I did because I wanted the motifs to really be easily identified, to stand out, you know, to see, um, to make sure you could see what they were. And the other thing I wanted to share with you these scissors, oh my goodness, they don't look very complicated at all. But for some reason, when I was trying to stitch the second half of these scissors, I had to frog them three times, three different times. I had to frog going down the first side. I got down in here and realized I had left out one row, and so this was up too high, and I had to take all that little curly cue back out and start over and do that again. And then when I got down here, I had the scissor uh, thumb holes. I had this one, somehow I had this long stretch here, one too short, and I had one too short of these little doubles down here. So I was two spaces too short, and I worked my way up here and it wasn't gonna meet up, and I had to frog all that out. And then when I came over here to do this inside piece, I had somehow gotten off uh, just a stitch in the wrong direction, trying to copy it, and, and I caught it very quickly, so that was very little bit of frogging. But three different times, I frogged on those scissors, and they're not that hard. I don't know, I heard someone say on a floss tube this week, uh, the easier it is they're trying to stitch, sometimes the worse it is that they frog, and I really felt that way on those scissors. But as, as it kept going, when I got so far on these words on the letters rather uh, when they started going so fast i knew then yesterday when i finished that whole alphabet before i went to bed and i had already done the greenery on one side i thought i'm gonna be able to finish this tomorrow i really am <laughs> so i am thrilled i'm absolutely thrilled scissors and bobbins um of course, it's written in French. I won't try to say that. I won't butcher the language. It's too beautiful to do that. Um, but here's my finish. I love the little needle, pretend needle. <laughs> it's actually cross-stitched in there that looks like it's put in through the fabric and then it's got the thread going around. So cute. I did substitute a few of my own colors, um, simple things. The hot pink or the dark pink was supposed to be 3721 and I didn't have it, so I used 3722, which is probably one shade different, um, but you, it still looks very much the same uh, to the pattern. You, you can't really tell, and you won't, you won't know that when you look at it in my room anyway. So there's my finish. Very happy with that.
Had not expected that this month. I had hoped to have another finish this month, but it was supposed to be one of the Advent animals, you know, where I knew I could stitch two days and have it done. I had no idea I would get to finish this this month. I was hoping to finish it by December. And had I stitched my normal way, where I only stitch a day or two on this piece, then I probably wouldn't have finished it. I would have finished it next month. But um, I'm kind of liking this September where I pick up something that's fairly close to a finish and if I can do it within, you know, three, four, five days even, I've done it. Now I'm getting closer to the end of the month, so that may be a little different. But very, very happy with this and just had to come and share it with you. Well, I don't know what I'll be stitching next. I won't even venture a guess because... I've got to look at my schedule to see if I have some sales that I want to stitch in um, on uh, with some of my Facebook groups there with um, Cross Stitch Finish Line or Stitch Mania or something like that. Um, so I will look at that again and then I'll pick the next thing I'm going to work on. But this afternoon, my husband and I are going to an open house. It's in a neighborhood that we've considered building in before and um, the builder sold the, uh, the properties and we didn't know who to contact to see if we could build in there. So today they have an open house of a home that's already built. And so we're gonna go and check it out, see if we like the construction and that sort of thing. And then I'm gonna take Coco on a nice long walk this afternoon because the weather is perfect. It is cool enough that we can go walking anytime I want and she will go anytime. <laughs> so I can get out there early enough that it won't turn dark on me and uh, my husband said he would go with us and have a nice little family walk, so I'm looking forward to that. I do have a couple of pictures I'm gonna insert of Coco uh, just laying in our kitchen, just to show you how much she's grown. She's gotten full grown now, and she's just so precious to me. And she's just, just sitting around, hanging out with us um, in her quiet way. So I'll, I'll share that with you. Um, and hopefully, and, and I do also have a video that my husband took of her on a walk recently. We have, um, we, we live in a area that has lake everywhere. You know, it's just lake. Every time you turn around, you're going across the lake, uh, part of the lake. And so one of the parks has a beach front at the lake. And so my husband took her down there as they were walking through the park and there was nobody there. And so he let her off leash and just let her run and play in the sand. Y'all know how much she loves the sand. So I've got a little video of that I'm gonna put at the end too. So um, those of you who enjoy watching Coco, you'll have some eye candy <laughs> at the end of the video. So I'm excited about that. Okay, well, I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna get ready to go to the open house. And then hopefully today I can do a little bit of planning toward the rest of the month and I might be able to come back and share that with you. I've really been flying by the seat of my pants this month, more so than usual because of these finishes I've been working on. So that's kind of different for me. <laughs> anyway, I hope you are having a great month of stitching. I know I am, and I can't wait to see what the rest of the month brings. Happy stitching, everybody. Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Dina and this is an update on what I've been stitching and a couple of other little things. I went to the framers, I went to Hobby Lobby and I was able to pick up a couple of uh, recent uh, finishes that I had framed there. And one of them, I st I'm leaving it wrapped in the plastic so it'll be a little bit harder to see but I'm gonna be shipping this to a friend and so I wanted to show it to you and I apologize for a little bit of the dullness because of the plastic wrap. But I, I wanna keep it clean as I'm gonna be mailing it. But this is Soul Sisters. And I just picked a beautiful um, dark wooden frame. Looks like uh, DMC 3371. I felt like it pulled out the house and matched the lettering very well. I just felt it complemented the piece. I did not mat this piece couple of reasons. One, it already has a border that looks like a mat sitting around it. And I also didn't put glass on it because I am going to be mailing it and I don't want the glass to break. 
So if the recipient of this piece wants glass on it, you know, they could take it to a framer and have that put in pretty easily, but um, it doesn't have to have glass. So I'm just gonna leave it the way it is for ease in shipping. But I wanted you to see it framed before I put it in the mail. So that's the first one. Secondly, I have my friends to show you. Remember I mentioned that I was able to pick up a picture frame at Hobby Lobby on sale 50% off and I had it double matted. I have a small black mat next to the picture and then I have the blue to pick up the blues in this piece. I'm sorry for the reflection, but I just used the glass that came in the picture frame so it's not you know, museum quality or, or non-glare. So I think it looks great. I hope my friend loves it. This little raised edge right here on the frame has little dots, if you can see them, looks like little beads around them. But I just feel like it, it complements the picture quite, quite well. I hope you like it. Sorry for the interruption. Coco and my husband got home from a walk and they came in the door calling for me. So I'm sorry if you heard some of that. Um, but I wanted to just show you what I've been stitching on. And I have actually been stitching on this a little bit each day for three days. I started this on Sunday, late Sunday afternoon. And um, I normally finish these in about two days, but I didn't have much time to stitch. I only got... Um, about 300 stitches, 324 stitches on Sunday, and then I only got another 305 yesterday. And then today I finished it up. I did the remaining 473 stitches, but I'm talking about my next Books Brooks animal, and this is Ethan Elephant. Isn't he adorable? <laughs> He's so cute. Well, I wanna show you what he looks like. There's my Ethan. This was a great piece, lots of gray. I uh, wasn't sure how that was gonna show up that well on this fabric, but it actually does show up fine. And you can see there was a lot of back stitching in this one. All the little toes and the wrinkles in his knees and his trunk and the outline of ears and clothing, tie, everything, and then some uh, couching I did for this for the bag cord that sort of thing this one even with all of that it only took me all uh, right under 10 hours to stitch but um, it was fun it was great fun to do so now I am ready to move on to number 22 next month and um, I'm actually hoping that I might be able to eke out the rest of them 22 through 25, maybe. So if not, definitely by November, I should have them done. And that will give me part, part of November and maybe the whole month of December to get them finished. So I wanna get them on my tree this year. Anyway, that's what I've been working on. Uh, my son has called in the meantime as well, and he's done at work and he's um, about to head home. So I'm gonna um, stop what I'm doing for a little bit, spend some time catching up with him, seeing how his day has been. And um, in the meantime, I hope to get back to stitching later today once I decide what I'm gonna stitch on. So I hope you're enjoying your stitching. I hope you're having a good time with it, as I am. And I hope you're getting some finishes if that's what you're trying to do. So enjoy, and I'll talk to you soon. Happy stitching, everyone. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dina and it is Thursday, the 24th of September. This month is flying by. <laughs> it's gonna be Christmas before we know it. I'm here with a wonderful update today. I had spent some time this morning talking to my friend Glow and we stitched together virtually and I had a finish while we were stitching. Oh, it was so exciting. <laughs> Thank you Glow for sharing that with me. Anyway, what I want to show you is my latest finish. 
This is Autumn Arbor by The Drawn Thread. And it is a beautiful, petite piece. Autumn Arbor, The Drawn Thread. I have the spring, the summer, and the winter to do, and I can't wait to do them because I'm in love with this. This is so beautiful. Look how small this is on this big piece of fabric. <laughs> So hopefully I'll get to use it again for maybe another one of the pieces, but this is my finish that I want to share with you. I think it's just beautiful. The colors are fantastic. Well, a couple of things about this chart. This is a lovely silk thread called Autumn Arbor. And um, it is actually a Gloriana silk. It's called for by the pattern. And the other silk that I had in my stash that I used was the, um, excuse me, I'm gonna shake the camera if I, if I hit you, Spanish Moss, which is another Gloriana silk. Spanish Moss. So here's the Autumn. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that variegation. So that's what is in these leaves, and these leaves, and these leaves, and these leaves. Now, here's the fun part. There's more specialty stitches in this piece than there are cross stitches. And I wanted to point that out to you a little bit. There, uh, there are a lot of cross stitches here as well, and the leaves and the pumpkin and in the little vine, but there are about 15 specialty stitches in here. Now they are easy to do, don't let them scare you, and they have fabulous diagrams that number one, two, three, four, so it shows you where to come up, where to go down, uh, and, and I just did that. I followed those diagrams every time I did that stitch until I had it, you know, memorized. And then I guarantee you I couldn't do it today without looking at it again. But so, so pretty. I had not done a lot of these stitches. So they were great fun. The head of the acorn was a new stitch to me. Um, it is called the Le Leviathan stitch. And I heard... Um, I think it was uh, Shelia on Sun Sunshine Stitchers did that with her book of stitches, you know, where she's doing a, a different specialty stitch for each letter of the alphabet. And I think her L was Leviathan Stitch. And then, of course, um, these caps of the acorns are um, just straight stitches. They're satin stitches, but in the in the pattern itself, they have them in a diagram depending on the direction you're to stitch them. So that, that way you don't get confused and you know where to start and where to stop on each one. I think that's awesome. Um, this little stitch here um, is a uh, straight stitch, a satin stitch. They call it an acorn stitch, but it's um, uh, a little small version of it. It's a little different than the bigger versions here. And then these leaves are interesting. You have long, straight, short, long, straight, uh, and you do them in a particular pattern. They call it a leaf stitch. And doesn't it make a beautiful leaf? And using that variegated thread makes that look so much like a fall tree with its leaves turning. Really, really enjoyed that one. Now this one is very different. Um, looking for the name, double cross, there we go. These are double crosses. You do a big cross over the, the ones, I did, all of this is one thread. So you did one thread and instead of doing it over two, you did it up too tall. So it's actually over four tall, two across but four tall. Then you come in and go down one thread and you do another stitch of an X right on top of it. So it's a double cross stitch. But doesn't it make a lovely, lovely image? 
think you can see it there. Then this one is a very different uh, stitch. It's a um, modified ray. So you have these these little leaves here that have different lengths of thread um, stitches on the outside versus the inside. And then you've got your Smyrna crosses. Now those I had done, this tree is all Smyrna crosses. And then this tree right here is a diagonal queen stitch. And then the beads are in there as well. So, so much, so much fun. They went really quick. Um, I think the hardest part for me was reading the difference in the um, key for the different patterns because the, um, symbols, thank you. I'm sorry, my brain was tired. The symbols that differentiated between several of these stitches um, were very similar. And on the printed pattern, it was hard to tell sometimes. So when I first got started, I will tell you a little secret. I stitched these stitches that are these little acorn stitches. Well, these are acorns, but these are interesting little flowers. Um, I stitched these on the top row in the same color, the cap and the body, all in the same color, and they weren't supposed to be, but I didn't, I couldn't tell because of the, the color for the uh, symbol that I thought I was looking at was this yellow color. When I got to the bottom, I had learned the symbols a little bit better. I had become a little more familiar with it, and I had realized that these were to be a different stitch in a different color. They were even a different stitch. And so I finished this whole band and realized that they looked so much better with the brown and the yellow that I pulled out every one of these up here and I redid them in the proper color and in the proper number of strands because that's the other thing. Every symbol on this chart told you what color to use in what stitch and how many strands to use. And so there are several in here with that have actually two strands when the whole piece is uh, one over two. Um, but some of it, like these little acorns up here are doubled. And this little acorn is double. And these little things are double, just the yellow part, probably to make it show up. And I have doubled the beaks myself because they weren't showing up on the birds. I just decided to, to stitch it again, you know, just do one more stitch over it to make it visible. But anyway, the beads are beautiful. These beads are, there are two colors of beads. I'm gonna get those for you. These are um, glass sea beads, size 15. Um, there's one that's copper and um, the other one is gold, and they are by SJ Designs. So they came in these little things like this, um, and you ordered them by the number, number 41 and number 128. And I beaded it, the copper beads are in this tree, they're in this tree, and they are on the ends of the greenery, they're just, on the pumpkins, they're the stems of the pumpkins. And then the gold are scattered throughout this band here. And they're um, also in this tree, all in that tree has gold beads. So that's where the beads are, but I'm finished. And this is how many beads I have left. <laughs> so definitely, have enough beads you don't have to worry about that if you order these beads you have plenty but these copper ones are just beautiful just beautiful and they're very tiny in fact i found um they were not uniform and there were many that i tried to put through my be my beading needle through and i couldn't get it through 
and I wound up having to take them back off the needle and, and put them to the side and, and try another bead. And, and that happened more than I would have liked. So I'm glad I had plenty of beads. So here's my finish. Really happy with that one. And um, I don't know if I'm going to frame it or if I'm actually gonna make little pillows out of these that I could put on my mantle every season. Um, but I will tell you, it was an enjoyable stitch. I enjoyed learning all the new stitches. Um, I enjoyed practicing them. Um, and I think it, it went really, really well. I was surprised that I was able to, to move through it as quickly as I did. I was thinking that this might be a finish next month, um, that I would stitch on it you know, this month again and then stitch on it again next month. I was, I was hoping to finish it this year, but had no idea I was gonna be able to finish it so quickly. But Autumn Arbor by The Drawn Thread. Thank you for letting me share that with you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Uh, we're heading into the weekend, so I hope you have a good weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Happy stitching. Hi everyone, welcome back. <laughs> this is Dina and today is Saturday. It's the 26th of September and I'm gonna be leaving here in a few minutes to relieve my co-director of the fundraising event at our church this weekend. And I will be at our bake sale um, charity uh, event that we're doing for our ministry of caring at our church. Um, probably till late this afternoon, early evening, uh, because I've got the afternoon shift, which means I'm on cleanup. <laughs> so I will go in um, at noon and, and relieve my co-chair, and uh, then I'll be there to help see it through. So this morning I got up early and got ready to go and sat down because I've been working on uh, a whip that I was trying to meet a goal to do a portion of the border to get uh, it closer to a finish and I'm hoping to finish it probably in October or November. So I have to ask my sister Stephanie to look away because this is for her and she'll be getting it sometime this coming uh, either Christmas or birthday. I haven't decided which yet, but okay, Stephanie, if you've looked away now, I'm gonna share with everyone else to remind them what I'm talking about. This is that beautiful piece that I started by Erica Michaels and um, I did my own color away and I'll share that with you. But what I had to uh, finish, I started working on this on the 24th and I had this word here to do and I had this section of the border I wanted to do. That was my goal for the 24th and I met it. But it went so well and I was so into the groove that I decided I would work on it another day. So I picked it up on the 25th, uh, after I got home from the uh, bake sale at the church, and I worked and worked and worked and worked till late into the night. I will not tell you how late, but let's just say it was as late as I was at StitchCon, so those of you at StitchCon can kind of guess. Anyway, I was able to finish this entire row here, and, um, got all of that stitching done, which is quite a bit. I had to chart my own and um, finished that up and then decided, well, now all I have left is this wraparound border here. So I got up, I started on it, and then I got up this morning and finished it. So I have a finish, hot off the cue snaps. I wanna remind you, um, the the floss I'm using is called, is a silk and it's South Pacific. And the accent color I used was DMC 841. So that's my color palette for this piece. And here is my finish. I think it's beautiful. I was so tickled because this, this border, this wraparound border, it actually starts here in one um, pattern has this gorgeous corner, goes around in that same pattern until that corner, which is a different corner. It's done differently. And then it goes into a different border and wraps up to here. So in this one piece, you've got three different borders. You've got this one, this one, and that one at the bottom. 
which I find fascinating because now if I ever need a border on something, I've got choices uh, that I might could just pull this pattern out and say, oh yeah, look, I could do that border here. And I love the fact that there are different corners. So you could pick and do that same corner over and over again, or you could do them different just like I did on here. It was lovely, absolutely lovely piece. I enjoyed it so much. So I'm um, happy to share that with you and um, hope you like it. Okay, Stephanie, you can look back now. Um, so a surprise, <laughs> a surprise for me. This uh, finishing September is um, going very well for me. I have, I've had a number of finishes that I actually had plotted out in my plans to not be until next month. I was going to work on them to get them ready to finish next month, you know, to push them further along. And I just decided, well, I'm just going to work on it till it's done. And I did on several of them. So I'm kind of liking that. <laughs> I do believe though, I think I have hit my last piece that I can do that with for this month for sure, because I don't have enough days left. Uh, I have four days left. Um, so I'm thinking that what I might do is pick up another Advent animal and eke out one more of those maybe this month. And uh, that way I won't have to do uh, as many in a month going forward. You know, can just get another one of those knocked out. But uh, that will, I at least would have two to three days in this month that I think I could get another Advent animal done. So that's my plan. All right, that's it for now. I'm gonna wrap up this video and at the end, I have some cocoa footage. I will tell you, my husband took her to a local uh, beach front. We have lake all around us and where we live, there's a huge lake here and it has fingers everywhere. So everywhere you turn, you'll find lake. But one of the spots he's discovered has a beautiful sandy beach. And she, as you know, adores sand. So he took Coco to that spot and he let her off leash. There was nobody there for her to bother. And so he let her just run and dig. And they were playing with the tennis ball and she got it in the lake and she went after it in true Coco fashion, tippy toeing in, not wanting to get wet. <laughs> She's funny. Uh, you wouldn't know she had Labrador in her. <laughs> you know, she just doesn't like the water that well. Not yet, anyway. But in this video, you'll see she's going for that little ball, uh, to that little tennis ball, and the water touches her belly, and she jumps like she's been bit. It is so funny. You have to, you have to give it a look. So I'll put that at the end and thank my husband for that footage. So I uh, hope you enjoy it. I hope you're enjoying your stitching. Have a great weekend, and I, uh, I will touch base with you again soon. Hopefully in a couple of weeks, I'll have more to share with you about plans and some stitching. In the meantime, everyone, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep stitching. Goodbye. Where'd you go? There you are. You're a good girl. Where'd he go? There you go. Where'd he go? What'd you find? What'd you find? Look at me. Pretty cool.
get it before it goes too far. Go get it. Get the ball. Get the ball. Quick, quick, quick. Go get the ball. Okay, the ball's going to get away from us. Oh, my goodness. We got to go get it. Go get it. Come on. Go. Uh-oh. It's gone too far. What are we going to do? I don't have a pole. You can do it. Go get it. One more time. One more time. There you go. Good girl. Get it. Yes. You're there. Get it. Coco, get the ball. Get the ball. You're there. Go get it. You're almost there. Yes. Hurry. Hurry. Oh, now what are we going to do?